Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be talking about the inline three-cylinder engine. Now this is an engine that's becoming a bit more popular with uh, rising demand for fuel economy. Uh, for example, two of the cars out there, one a prototype, the Z out RC that uses an inline three-cylinder, also the BMW i8, so some pretty cool cars are using it as well. So let's talk about a little bit how it works and some of the advantages and disadvantages of this engine. So here we have our three-cylinder inline block. In order to calculate the firing interval, we take the number of strokes, multiply it by 180 degrees, divide that by the number of cylinders, that gives us a firing interval of every 240 degrees rotation of the crankshaft. So what that means is there are going to be times when there's not a power stroke occurring, so the power delivery of an inline three-cylinder isn't going to be quite as smooth as an engine with more cylinders in it. So 240 degrees, that means we can split the crankshaft into 120 degrees. So here we've got a look at a three-cylinder crankshaft, cylinder one at top dead center, cylinder two off to the right, and cylinder three off to the left. So if we rotate this to the right, this is top dead center, and our firing interval is every 240 degrees. So if we go 100, 240 degrees, we get our firing interval goes one, and then two, and then another 240 degrees, and then we hit three. So very simple to remember firing order. You also could do a 1-3-2 and change up some of the things with the design of the engine. Now, talking about the balancing of the engine, very similar to an inline six. So if you have seen my video on that, it's pretty much the exact same thing, but cut in half. So your uh, vertical forces, the reciprocating mass is actually going to balance out with the primary and secondary forces. That said, you are going to have this rocking moment from side to side uh, because as you can see all vertical forces here and downward forces here, so if you look about the center, it's going to be pushing it in that direction and then as it rotates back and forth. So the engine is going to want to rotate like that, uh, which of course is not desirable. So the benefits of an inline three cylinder engine, well your primary and secondary forces are balanced vertically. It's compact and lightweight and those are very uh, important things uh, for small cars and efficient cars. Reduce frictional losses with less cylinders, that's a possibility. Uh, it's also cheap to build because there's so few cylinders uh, and it's a small engine. And also smaller displacement engines lead to better fuel economy. So some of the drawbacks of this engine. Well, there's a plane imbalance, like I said, so it's going to want to rock back and forth. Uh, and because of that, you're going to want to add a heavy crankshaft in order to kind of counter that moment. So that's going to make it less of a free revving engine. You know it's going to take a little more power to rev it up and take a little bit more time. Also, you have 60 degrees of crankshaft rotation without any power strokes occurring. So the power delivery on this is not going to be very smooth. And where that's going to be most noticeable is at lower RPMs where, you know, you don't have as many power strokes occurring uh, per t duration of time. And so, you know, you're going to have this more noticeable vibration from it because you don't have this even power stroke overlap. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.